Hey all, Rick Rex here, back with another one for you on DCUO. This time we're starting up our look at the Sorcery DPS loadouts, and we're beginning with our single target. Now we of course are going to cover white mods, artifacts, allies, the build, the loadout, and we're also going to check it out to see what kind of damage that it can do. But first, if you like what you see and you want more, hit that like and subscribe button to help keep the channel growing and also to not miss one single update as they drop. So sorcery single target. Now I had a focus in mind with this one and it was really pretty simple. I wanted to test out the projectiles and see if there was a way around it or if it was viable. And I also wanted to really dissect the supercharges to see where the best avenue lies there. Now at one point, Sork was great and then it turned into hot garbage for a really specific reason. The projectile hitbox on the power set was way too small and it missed all the time. It really seems like they spent some time on it as it isn't nearly as bad as it once was, so with that being said, projectiles are not a thing of the past, save a few bosses here and there who move really erratically all of the time. Now what I found with the power set is, is that it really affects only one phase of combat and not on single target for the most part, so it really excludes it from the conversation of not really working that well. Now I touch base on this because I have one tune on live that I run as Prek, and that's my Sork tune. I did that for a simple reason, because her projectiles always missed, and she hit like a freight train when she did hit, but it seemed like she never hit. So I went with her on a hybrid pet prec build. So I spent the time on Might, did the dirty work, and came up with something that really hits like a champ, and I gotta say, this one's pretty nice. After the dissection, I'm considering actually going back to Might build on my live tune, so that way I don't give myself premature arthritis, since this one will compete and excel just fine on its own. Now we start out as always with our white mods. In our weapon, we're going Replenishing Adapter. Now we're going this way just in case we run out of power so we can get it back quickly, but I have to say that this is another power set that's just extremely power friendly so you won't find yourself in that situation often. Now in our head, we're going Supercharge Grand Summoning. Now I know what you're thinking here. Grand Summoning is trash and outdated. Well, not so fast. I'll touch base on why we're going that way in just a moment. In our neck, we're going Escalating Might as always to take advantage of the 2% Might Bump ramp up that occurs while using Might Powers. And in our back, we're going Berserker. We don't really have any type of a cooldown issue with Sorcery, so when that's the case, we always opt for the extra damage that we can get when the situation allows us to get it. Berserker. In our chest, we're going Penetrating Strikes to leverage the defense reduction of 2% on the NPCs. And as a side note here, a few years ago we passed the point where the extra damage from core strength was outdone by the reduction of defense with Penetrating Strikes. So you should always be going that way unless you are sub 280 CR. In our legs, we're going Restorative Soul Barrage as we don't want to be changing this as we're going between builds and none really fit our single target loadout really well. In our feet, we're going Tumbling Master to keep ourselves out of trouble and this one's just a necessity with all of the environmental damage that gets thrown at us nowadays with current content. And in our hands, we're going Max Damage as always for that extra 2% damage increase that it gives us and I would recommend that if you don't have Solar Amp leveled up all the way to 200, go with Empowered Channeling Mod here for sure. Now for Artifacts, we're going with the Trans Strat Solar Combo. Trans for the extra crits that it provides us, Strat to leverage those crits into innate damage and Solar for its large bump in might the increase in damage to heat vision, and as I mentioned a moment ago, that empowered channeling mod which is super important with this type of a build. Now for allies, we're going to go with our new trinity. On the damage side of things, we're going superman for his cone attack and that hits really nice on large groups and single target, but you can sub in house of legends in the spot for single target and you'll really see some nice gains from him specifically. Now I'm using soups as a general overall for the power set and damage roll, so you'll kind of notice that throughout, but again, if you do choose, sub in House of Legends. Now on our first passive, we're going with Batman who lasts for his luck of the draw ability to give us those stat bumps that comes from those cards. 
And we're going to round that out with our last passive and the new member. That's Shazam. Now we're using his power of the Shazam Elite for the bump that occurs when you throw an ally of 6% in might. Now this one will be available in a day or two to everyone on live, so he is a must have at this point. And now for the build. Now in our weapons, we aren't going to be spending any points here as we simply won't be using it except in an extreme emergency situation, so no points necessary. In our movement mode, we're going to take our superpower movement, don't forget that y'all, one on the second row of your choosing, and it really doesn't matter which, and then we're going to go on ahead and take our innates. Acrobatics to the lower right, and everyone else to the left to the left. Now for Iconics, we're only going to take Heat Vision here. I know it shows Neo Venom Boost, but I did that for testing only, and it's not necessary to take it all. And for skill points, we're going Super Powered Focus, we're going to max out our crit attack chance and damage, and then dump everything else into Might and Power. Anything remaining from here goes straight into health, because remember y'all, a dead DPS does no DPS. So for comparison's sake, I wanted to pull up my stats for you so that way you can kind of compare it to yours on live. With this build, it puts my might at 179, 194. Now bear in mind yours will probably be higher on live as my stats are, but that's a good thing, right? And now for the star of the show, and that's the loadout. So we're going with Soul Siphon, Final Ruin, Shard of Life, Amplified Heat Vision, and we're rounding it out with Fury and Grand Summoning. So here's the thought process. We need a PI. The hardest hitting power that applies a PI is Soul Siphon. Now I've said in the past that I'm not a fan of powers that pull. This one does. I'm still not a fan of powers that pull. But this one just plain does more damage, so I have to give it a pass. If you're hesitant here, go with Transmutation, but know you will get a reduction of damage off of this one that is not insignificant. Final Ruin does not require a PI to maximize it as a finisher, but its multiple hits over long animation with a single target focus is what we're after here. Shard of Life works very similar to Ice Boulder Strike with Ice, but it doesn't hit quite as hard. Though, it does provide us a dot or damage over time that works in favor of keeping our strat card going off all of the time. Now, Amplified Heat Vision is a pretty obvious one, so it's always a necessity in single target loadouts. And then Fury. Well, we're going to use him similar to how we would use Robot Sidekick in this instance. We don't need to feed him as he's just there to do some extra background damage and that's it with his weapon attacks. Now let's touch base on the super and why. Grand Summoning was ruled trash a long time ago. It's an expensive supercharge at 10,000, but it does have two things going for it and that's consistency and length. So here's what I mean. Neo Venom Boost goes off and lasts for 15 seconds. In that time, you're gonna be able to put up an extra 100 to 400,000 in damage in a might-based loadout. Grand Summoning does not hit as hard, but it does last for 30 seconds, and it's not crit dependent. So in that time, we're gonna do around 1.1 million, making this one just the better option all around. With an asterisk, this is not to be used to finish off a boss. This is for burn throughout the fight. If you want burst burn, go with polymorph in this situation as it will give somewhat compatible damage but it is crit dependent but still will hit harder than Neo Venom Boost at least in this power set. So with all that being said, let's go on ahead and check out the damage and see what this thing can do.
Okay, so there we go. On single target, let's go on ahead and get the dirt off our shoe. We came in with a low of 101.500 DPS. Now, this one was really stamped out because the crits just weren't there and it looks like they came in in the wrong places, but it seems to be an outlier. Our high came in at 148.184. Now that's a great parse. Now we had a few hop into that range, but the loadout looks to live or average out around the upper 120s to the lower 130s, making this one work out just fine in damage. Now even though this one did so well, it's time for my favorite part. Let's drop everything. Okay, awesome. Man, I love that. So our big hit registers in at 628,391 damage per second, which is amazing. But remember, that's not the end of our supercharge at play with Grand Summoning. We followed it up with one at 190,000 and one at almost 180 and then settled back in around normal at the upper 120s to mid 130s. You want to melt a boss? This is the way. And this is why we go with Grand Summoning instead of a burst damage. I love it. Well y'all, that wraps up Sork's single target. Next up is the AoE loadout, so stay tuned for that one, and this power set has been really fun. Thanks y'all for joining, and once again, if you like what you see and you want more, hit that like and subscribe button to help keep the channel growing, and also to not miss one single update as they drop. I'll see y'all next time.